Yo, yo, what's going on? Ant E46 Source here. Um, first, I just want to apologize for the crappy production of my last video on how to reset the service, um, oil service light. Like I said, my um phone that I usually use was my Android to take my videos. I dropped it and cracked it, so now I can no longer see out the screen, so it's broke. Um, I know I need to really just need to go ahead and buy a dedicated camera if I'm going to keep this channel up and going. That's what I'm going to plan to do. I might try to see if I can catch a sale next week on Black Friday. Like I said, I just want to apologize from the bottom of my heart of the crappy production. But right now, I'm just working with limited resources. I'm working with my iPhone. And in my iPhone, I have to make one continuous video to upload it to YouTube. I can't stop and pause and everything because I can't use my own. Um, video editing software um to edit the video to string them together so um anyway with that being said like i said i'm deeply apologize for that um for that crappy production but hopefully y'all are still able to see how to reset your service engine light and if you can't just let me know and i make another video on down the line when it's time for me to change my oil again or whatever um so yeah anyway um what this video is right here is what to look for when buying the e46 had a bunch of people come in and write me um saying that they're interested in buying the e46 and wanted to know what things to look for to look out for when buying one um the main thing that i would say about buying an e46 if your budget can allow it i would buy a 2002 model and later reason being is the 99 up to 2001 models had issues with the subframes um subframes getting cracks in them and things like that so if you're gonna buy a e46 and it's a pre-2002 model the very first thing i would do before you buy that car is i would take it to one of your uh, local mechanics somebody you trust have them look at the frame and make sure there's no hairline fractures or um, any rust or anything that looks bad around your subframe. Um, that was a major issue with those cars um, pre-2002. Um, even after 2002, it still was a little bit of an issue, but it wasn't as bad as the pre-2002 issues. Um, they really tried their best to... Uh, redo the frames um in the um so they wouldn't get cracked or anything like that um from what i read online the reason being is these cars had just a little too much torque <laughs> for the frame oh uh, that's what i read online that's what caused it but they changed the frames around and um the frames are now better after 2002 like i said they still said that it's possible to, to get a hairline fracture and things like that in your subframe but um it's very slim in a um post two thousand two model. So that's one. Um secondly, another main issue is your valve cover gasket. That is a notorious problem with uh E forty sixes and it don't matter what year it is. Um oil leaking for your valve cover gasket. Um when I bought this car, I had that problem. And so what I want to do is I want to tell you an easy way that you could tell if your valve cover gasket is leaking. So if your valve cover gasket is leaking oil, you'll get a burnt, kind of like a burnt oil smell or a burnt, burnt rubber smell in your cabin. Now, there is a way that you can hide this. Looks like whoever tried, had my car before either tried to hide it before they traded it in or... Maybe when they trade the car in, CarMax knew the problem and they tried to hide it to the next person that sells it. So anyway, when your valve cover gasket is leaking, you'll get a burnt smell coming out your center vent. The way to hide it is turn your vent all the way down to cold. That smell won't come in. Um... And what happened was when I first got this car, it was winter. And this was blowing straight cold air. I like to keep mine in the middle. Even in the middle, these vents right here, if you keep it in the middle, it's still going to blow cold air when you have the heat on. And your two outside vents blow heat. 
in the E46, your air conditioning where it's pretty much like a car, um, an air conditioning inside the house. Uh, what I mean by that is you set it at a temperature and it's gonna regulate at that temperature. So so that it's not just blowing straight heat on you and you in an uncomfortable setting. These outs, like I said, these outside vents blow heat. This blows like cool air, but it's not too cool to where you, you know, it's 30 degrees outside and it's blowing cold air on you and you're freezing. It's just a nice mixture. I'm pretty sure you've gotten in the car and you turn the heat on high and then about five minutes later you have to turn it off because you're too hot. You set it on the temperature and just leave it. Like I set my car on about 73 and I can leave it on 73 year round. That's even in the winter time because all it does is um, when it gets above 75 degrees or 73 degrees is usually what I have it set up. I turned it up this morning because I was just a little cold and I have a cold. But I'll use this leave it on 73, and that's good enough for heat and air. I never really have to touch my own um, my own air conditioning. Like I said, this works like an AC in your house. Um, so yeah, what it did, like I said, it blows cool air out of the center vents um, to regulate the air. Well, I feel like this was blowing too too cold. Like what's going on here? So I changed it to the middle, and then I started getting a burnt oil smell. I was like, what is going on? Um, when I looked into the hood, couldn't really tell that it was um, leaking oil. But you can get the smell. I was like, yo, I'm pretty sure my valve, is, oh, my valve cover gas can smell it because I smell it. And then I did find a little drop of oil somewhere around the valve cover, but you, I, I, you have to inspect very closely. The easiest way to tell is just really when you get when you're going to look at an E46, if they have it turn it all the way down, turn it to the middle, or either turn it all the way up to heat, because you'll get the smell and heat too. So, just turn this knob right here, just make sure it's not all the way down, and let the car run. Let the car heat up, make sure the car heat up, because if the car is running in cold, you're not going to smell it. Um, so, just make sure the car is um, at operating temperature like my car is, and then sit down, look, look, oh, well, sit there and smell, really. Just wait, give it around, uh, give it some time to drive around. And um, if you smell it, then you know that you got a valve cover um, gasket issue. Now me, I was lucky because um, CarMax is where I bought my car from. They have a 30-day warranty. So I found the issue out within 30 days. Um, so they fixed it for free. So, I mean, those two problems are really the only two like major problems with E46 that you have to look for. I mean, the, besides that, these cars are pretty solid. But that... um. That subframe issue is a big issue though because that's a lot of money to fix. They can fix it, but that's a that's a lot of money. It's almost worth just leaving the car there. I wouldn't buy it. Um, by the time you spent that, I mean, probably buying an older like a 1999, you know, or 2000, you know, whatever E46. Buying the old E46s that probably has a lot of miles. You're gonna end up spending more, almost more on that to get the car fixed. Then, um, then probably what you paid for the car. I mean, I know before I bought this E46 here, I was looking at older E46 that's kind of high in miles, like 140 some thousand, 150. And, you know, you and I remember seeing you can get those E46s for about, you know, 4,500 to 5,000, maybe up to 7,000 um, dollars. So I mean, you can get them at a pretty reasonable price. Um, my car, I paid 15 for mine because mine was low in miles, and I'm kind of happy I went that route. Yeah, I got car payments, but I got I had a car that's low in miles, and I got my car. It was still in the 60s. only had like 67,000 miles on it, so, I mean, barely driven. Uh, I don't put 20,000 miles on it in the one year that I had it. Um, that's why I'm going to get my E28 back up on the road so I can kind of sit this car down and stop driving it as much, but, um, yeah, those are really the only two um, things to look out for. Now, I will tell you another issue that I do currently have with my E46, and this is the only other one, but it's not too major. Um, I was scared it was going to be major, but it wasn't. Is every now and then, when it's hot, and it has to be real hot inside my cabin, but my sunroof open up by itself just like that. It'll open to the vented position. If you can see, vented. It only does this when the cabin gets real hot on the inside. 
almost sounded like it was a safety mechanism or something, you know, for the car. But only thing about it, when that happens, you can't close the sunroof back. So if you get that problem with your sunroof, I'm going to tell you how to fix it. Now, since mine is not actually stuck right now, as soon as I press this forward, it's going to close it. But if your sunroof ever gets stuck in the vented position, just press it forward, hold it. And then your sunroof is going to go like, chur, chur. <laughs> it's going to make a movement. Mine's not going to make a movement right now because it's not stuck. And once it makes them that move, let it go. And then press it forward again. And then boom, you're fine. If, you're, if you get your sunroof and it only opens halfway or um, closes halfway, then instead of pushing forward and hold it, you press in the middle and hold it. And it's going to reset your arm. Um, reset the tracks on your sunroof now this one i can show you because it don't have to be stuck so you so i'm just pressing and holding it and then sooner or later it'll open up by itself and go all the way back and do a little test mode see this testing boom boom and see that's how you all uh, reset it if your sunroof don't close all the way see how it's testing and then it closed it stopped right there halfway I'm sorry for the video I don't know if you can tell it stopped halfway just press it again and it'll finish closing see it's going back and forth if it gets stuck like that see I'm trying to close it and it keeps opening back up just do it over again just hold it, press and hold it, and it'll eventually close. I'm just gonna keep this button. Oh shit, my bad. I'm just gonna keep this button compressed and held. Then it'll eventually close back on its own. Still, still holding it. And then it popped up. And then just press. Press and hold it. Um, so anyway, go ahead and end this video right here. So that was just a quick video on what to look for when you're buying the E46. And um, like I said, on my last video on how to reset your oil service light, uh, I'm very sorry for that, that poor video. I mean, I can't really redo it over again right now because I haven't driven the car anywhere. So um, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. So you probably see in this video and you're like, sorry, sorry, you don't even have that video up. I just thought about I'm just gonna drive my car for a couple of days and get the miles to come down. And then once the miles come down, I'll reset the video. I'll reset it and show it again. Cause that video just came out too horrible. And I don't want to put that piece of shit video up on my channel. Um so that's what I'm gonna do. Since I haven't put it up yet, I'm just gonna go ahead, put this video up up um put this video up on what to look for when buying the E forty six so uh, E46, uh, E46, and then once I drive the car and get the miles to move, then I will redo the video on how to um, reset the oil service. Um, until then, um, this E46 source, and I'm out.